People sometimes ask why we need to explore other planets. The answer is, if we want to understand how the Earth fundamentally works, or the origin of life on Earth, we need to explore other worlds. My name is Joe Michalski. I'm a planetary geologist, and I use infrared remote sensing to study the mineralogy of Mars. The thing that's most interesting to me about Mars is that four billion years ago, the Earth and Mars were very similar. Because the Earth is so geologically active, we're missing the first billion years of our history. Those rocks have all been eroded and recycled, but that ancient rock record exists on Mars and it's intact. By studying those rocks, we can understand by analogy what the early Earth was like. And that's critical because we think that's the time period when life emerged. Satellite images of Mars reveal a desolate volcanic landscape. And vast sheets of volcanic sand. They also show very specific types of minerals, which indicate that volcanic rocks have been altered by water, ice, and snow. To better understand their significance, we need to explore the geological processes that created them. The problem is, right now, it's impossible to go to Mars. So, we need to visit Mars-like terrains on Earth. I've just arrived here in the Oski region of central Iceland. I'm here with my colleague, Robert Armstrong, to investigate the geology of the central highlands in Iceland. The first time I came here, I was struck by the vast volcanic landscape here and how similar that is to what we see on Mars. There are these blocks of jagged volcanic rock in a sea of volcanic sand. One of the incredible things that's going on in Iceland is it's a volcanic landscape, but yet it's glaciated. And both of those things are very similar to what we see on Mars. The interaction of water with hot volcanic rocks results in these vast hydrothermal fields. There's reason to believe this may be the kind of site where life could have originally formed on Earth. We think that a common ancestor to all life on Earth is something called a thermophile bacteria that thrive in hot environments. And that's why we're looking for places like this beyond Earth, on Mars or on other planets. Geologically, this is a really exciting place to be. We can see rocks being altered by hot fluids which are coming from below our feet. And what we see is the original rock changing color to reds and yellows and whites. Significantly, from space, these multicolored minerals within the hydrothermal deposits are strikingly similar to those observed on the surface of Mars using satellite data. If we're right, it indicates that the conditions for microbial life existed there too. But perhaps more importantly, they provide a window into the early missing geological history of the Earth. Whether or not we will find actual evidence for life, we don't know. But whatever we find, it'll teach us about the uniqueness of our environment here on Earth and give us insights into our place in the cosmos. So my name is Michael Benson and I'm a photographer and a writer. My work over the last decade has focused largely on planetary science. For the first time, after centuries of wondering, we have the technology to send camera systems up there and look. And as a result, we've seen a suite of landscapes that the science fiction writers of the pre-space flight era could only dream of. This show is, among other things, a retrospective look at an entire genre of photography, which started in the, in, the, in the 60s and up till now. 
So for example, this was from 1967, and it's an image of the crescent moon with Earth beyond it. That was taken a year before human beings saw that, when Apollo 8 went to the moon. Right now, there's a lot of activity in planetary exploration. All of what I'm producing comes from that effort. The scientists go in looking for evidence to support their theories about the atmosphere of Jupiter, about volcanoes on Mars. I go in looking for extraordinary vistas and images that can give us a sense of our larger context. One of the images I'm particularly proud of in the show is the moon Enceladus. It's a perfect studio situation because you have the sun lighting one hemisphere, you have this bright crescent, and then Saturn is huge and nearby, and the sun is bouncing off Saturn and lighting the dark side of Enceladus. So you have this beautiful sense of volume in the image, you know, and then up top, you see these guys are shooting up into space, you know. All of the images, with some exception, you know, I'm, I'm going for something that is as close to the true colors of what we see as possible. I'm going for realism. And yet, you know, with some of the images, you, they really seem abstract because they're extraordinarily complex. They can be very uh, hard to read. In, in particular, Europa, it's an ice-covered moon. Is there life in that ocean? We don't know. There's this kind of ambiguity there, lurking there, which gives the picture some power, I think, you know, several layers of meaning. I've been doing this work for more than a decade, you know, and only recently have I discovered a way to take black and white images of Earth from weather satellites and merging it with color data from other sources to get glorious color images of Earth that can be printed two meters square. As I've been processing these images, it has had a profound impact on me. You see the planet in context, you see the beauty of the planet. We don't have any other worlds in the solar system remotely suitable for human life. All images are ambassadors between phenomenal reality and ourselves. We tend to need signs to understand. You know, we bring the complex, opaque, vast, powerful universe into a scale that helps us to understand it. And certainly photography is one way we do that. I'm looking for a different type of uh, revelation, you know, uh, a different type of understanding.